call to order the uh, annual meeting of the Arlington Housing Authority at uh, 648. Uh, just a qu quick uh, roll call. Um, Brian? Yes. Uh, Gar? Yes. Diorella? Here. And Joanne? You're on mute, Joanne. Mute. Here. Yeah, okay, great. Okay. Uh, so the annual meeting um, election of chairman uh, is the first uh, piece of order here. So uh, I'd like nominate. Yeah, go ahead, Gar. I'd like to nominate Brian Connor for chairman. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you for your okay. Uh, any discussion? We good. All right. All in favor, Brian Connor as chairman of the Arlington Housing Authority. Can I ask a question? I'm sorry. Hi, Nick. Can I ask a question? I'm not sure, John. I just wanted to ask if, if a person is assigned by the state, he's not an elected official. Is there a conflict of interest being a chair? Because I see a situation Wait, where. A, I'm John, sorry. Yeah, John, I think this is a good question. Right, say it again. I didn't hear. If there's what? Say it again. Say it slowly. I didn't hear. Understand you. Say it again. Who? Okay. Who? Who? Who's asking the question? Too? Who's asking? Who's asking the question? I'm sorry, it's Regina. I'm sorry, it's Regina. Regina. Oh, it's sorry. Regina. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. I, I, my question is, if a person is assigned by the state as a rep, and he's not an elected official of the town, which is was select the board. Isn't there a potential dual responsibility or conflict of interest? Oh, wait, 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 let me see. You're saying, that, does that have anything to do with here? You're saying is somebody's a representative, a state representative, and is on the board? No, we don't have anybody who's a state representative who's no, on the no, board. No, Brian is the representative of the state, and everybody else is elected by the city. No, the there's no board, No, all right, to answer the question, there's no conflict of interest there. He's appointed by the state. But he's a member of the housing of the Arlington Housing Authority Board, and it's not two positions; it's only one position, and there's no conflict. Okay. Of interest. Okay. Thank Great. you. Because I was thinking, if a tenant has a problem and it can't be resolved by the AHJ board, and then they they're told by the state to go talk to the state rep, that would be the position of the chair, and he's wearing both hats. Who does he side with, or who does? I mean, who gets the best representation, the state? On a, on a it is not a conflict of interest. There's no problem there at all. Thanks, John. Perfect. That's all I need to know. Thank you. Thank you, Regina. Okay. Um, all in favor of Brian Connor being chair. Um, Gar? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Brian? Yes. And Nick is a yes, so it's unanimous. Congrats, Brian. Um, thank, thank you very much. Piece of order is the election of vice chair. Do I have a nomination for vice chair? I'd like to nominate uh, Joanne Preston. Um, do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Fiorella. Okay, all in favor. Joanne Preston is vice chair. Uh, Gar? Yes. Uh, Joanne? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Fiorella? Yes. Brian? Yes. And Nick is a yes. Unanimous. Congratulations, Joanne. Um, last piece of order here. The election treasurer. Do I have a nomination for treasurer? I'll nominate Gar. Gar? I'll second it. Second. Thanks, Joanne. Um, all in favor of Gar, treasurer. Gar? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Brian? Yes. And Nick is a yes. That's unanimous. Uh, before we adjourn, I just want to say thank you publicly to the town of Arlington uh, for re-electing me for the next five years. And I really appreciate it. I'm honored and I'm humbled by your support. So thank you again. And I promise you I'll do the best I can and I will be available for anybody that needs your help or needs our help. So thanks again. So uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn.
Yeah, I do have a second. I'll second that. Yarella, thank you. Uh, all in favor to adjourn, Barth? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Yarella? Yes. Brian? Yes. And Nick is a yes. Um, so, Brian, I'm going to turn this over for you to take the uh, regular meeting. So, thanks, everybody, great. for a great thank year. You. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, Nick, and um, thank you all for your confidence. And uh, we've got a lot of good things to work on as we go in the future. However, I think my clock says 6:54, and we've advertised for a seven o'clock start. So we've That's got right. yep. six minutes. We got a. Anybody want to sing a song or something? <laughs> let you Congratulations to all of you. That's great. <laughs> Changes. Yeah. Go ahead. Right, I, it's Gar. I just got back from Nashville. You want me to sing? Oh, there you go. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're not uh, wearing masks in Nashville, that's for sure. My daughter was they down do, there. They, yeah, they don't do. I didn't get COVID there. I'm never going to get it. Yeah, she was, she was horrified because nobody's wearing a mask down there. And she had been yeah. vaccinated still. But, uh, yeah. but that's always a fun place. Oh, yeah. I've never been to Nashville. Uh, it's a great spot. We, we did New Year's Eve there once, and um, wow. it, uh, it, in, in New York City the ball drops, but in Nashville the note drops. So it's kind of uh, uh, that's cool. yeah, cr it's a crazy that's place. Cool. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. But, uh, yeah uh, this is Kathy at Drake. I want to say congratulations, Nick. You deserve it. And to Jack Nagel, congratulations. You deserve the promotion, too. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. Thank you for your support. Yep. Yeah. John Ward, do you have a comment to do? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, once again, I, I, I will congratulate everybody who uh, won their, their position in the last election. But anyone who uh, submits that it was the town that elected them, there are 30,000 people registered to vote in this town, and only 3,000 of them voted. For the yeah, people 6, who won. 6,000 voted, John. 6,000. I'm talking about the people who won. The winners got 3,200 votes. That's not a, a town. That's a small, abysmal fraction, and it's a, an embarrassment to the town of Arlington. That's my comment. I, I mean, I think that's an ongoing problem here. Uh, of course, if it's a presidential election, you seem to get a lot more people. But I, and this is not a not a new problem to a small town. But that doesn't excuse any of it. Yep. You might as well educate people on voting then. Maybe not enough people know about it or understand why they want to should get involved. Yeah. Well, the town of Arlington has a an elections modernization committee, and they've done absolutely nothing. They came up with a stupid uh, uh, notion about the uh, uh, choice, ranked choice, which is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. It does nothing to promote people voting, and it does. It's it's really a uh, uh, another um, sinister attack on our democracy. The people who don't vote in this town should be ashamed of themselves. Does and anyone can know what percentage is close to eighteen and like twenty five? I feel like a lot of younger people haven't registered to vote. Well, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if anybody's ever studied that. It'd be an interesting project. Mm -hmm. um, but, but it's not new, that's for sure. That doesn't make it right, Mr. Connor. Well, I agree with you, but you're I making voted. it. I voted. You're, I voted too, John. Anybody, who, the people, anybody who accepts it is part of the problem and not a part of the solution. John, you should run for selectmen. What is the solution? <laughs> run for selectmen, John, and you might have a. There solution. is a solution to it. If, if less than 51% of the people that are 
registered to vote do not vote in an election that should be considered invalid. And that post will remain vacant until 51% of the registered voters show up. That's one way. Those posts should remain vacant until a de democratic number of people vote. Yeah. So you can put them into a warrant for town meeting next year. There you go, John. Yes. That would be an interesting debate. That would be, yeah. Yeah. Could I make a comment to this, please? Sure. John, we, have one I, minute. we have one minute left. We have one minute left, John. Uh, Brian, at 6.59. Yeah. Okay, I, I have one minute. John, I agree with you wholeheartedly, but this has been a very, very trying year for everybody to get out to vote. It was very difficult. I signed up for absentee ballot, never got one from the town. So that's the town's problem. Yeah, I agree with you. Education with um, voters needs to be heavier. And yeah. that's all I need to say. Got another 30 seconds if you want to say anything else. <laughs> <laughs> nope that's it okay so i have seven o'clock on my computer here um so why don't we open up and begin the regular meeting of the arlington housing authority um today's april 27 2021 um and we've on the agenda here, uh, say that at one point we are going to go into an executive session uh, when we do that, we would ask that everybody drop off uh, the call so we don't have to um, re every the board members re log on to this um, uh, uh, call. So, um, first things first, call the order. So, let's do a roll call, uh, even though we've got one already. So, Nick? I'm here. Yep. Star? Yes. Win? Here. And Fiorella? You're on mute. Here, Oops. sorry. There we go. There we go. Thank you. Um, excellent. Thank you. And Brian's here. Uh, so, uh, first up, local tenant organizations, presidents from the organizations. Pam, would you like to add Pam something? House. Yes, Pam House of Winslow Towers. Um, first of all, congratulations to all the new chairman, the chairman and vice chairman and treasurer of the board. I know we're going to get a lot of good things accomplished. Congratulations, Nick, on your win. Um, the only problem I have is the slowness in, which will probably come up under project updates, the windows. It's a big problem now down here, considering it's stopped for the past two weeks. So I think that is going to be a big problem when it comes in what's going on. But other than that, I have nothing else to bring up. Okay, great. Uh, Kathy, anything from Drake? Well, I'd like to say congratulations to all the new ones. You you all deserved it. Whether or not 50% or 20% voted, you won. And that should be it. But I have something with Pam and Brian, the committee that we're on for um, the daily. Yep. Um, people here kind of feel slighted. They understand that you're going to name um, you know, the Joseph F. Daily Learning Center. But if they want something here, they want to know if we can change the regular common room to the daily room. Because they feel Joe and Janet lived here, that we should have something here also for them. I think that's a great idea. Um, and may maybe it should be the, um, the husband and wife team and not just the Joe room. You know, what do you, what's your thought on that? Well, we were going to go daily's room. Oh, daily's plural. I see. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, 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 how about the daily double room? I like that too. Somebody else said that. Who said that last time? I think it was you, Brian. Joking Joe around. Joe used to say the daily double, didn't he? Sorry, that was Joe's favorite line, daily double. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, mean, I think that's an easy move if somebody wants to make a motion. Um, well, Brian, if I may, um, you know, it's not on the agenda to do that. I, I think, uh -huh. you know, it's a great idea. I'm not, not being negative about it, but I think that you probably ought to put it on an agenda item, and then you can vote for it that way probably next yeah. meeting. So, um, 
Wow, who has all the quarter? I think it's Marie. Good mute, Marie. So why don't we put that? So Jack, put that on the agenda for next month. Um, and um, that's that's a great idea, Kathy. So we'll discuss it next month and we'll come up with a motion. Um, that'd be great. great. Idea. Um, Thank you, Brian. Pam. Uh, Pam, did you say something? Yeah, I forgot to bring up one thing. I know that the um, board voted to give us free washers and dryers until June 1st. That's a month away. Um, are they going to continue doing that or are you going to put it back on pay? I think we're going to discuss that. At um, Since it's not on the agenda, we'll discuss it at the next meeting. So we'll put that on. Okay, the thank you. Yeah. Um, and that brings up a good point, folks. As we go forward, if there's, Pam, especially in the president's, if there's things like this, if you could get them to myself or Jack, you know, seven days or, I mean, I think we have to post, it's 48 hours, but if you can get them a week in advance, then we can get it on the agenda so we can discuss it and come to some conclusion. Uh, that would be a, you know, and that goes for anybody uh, on the on this meeting. Um, then we could put it on there. I, I forget that we have to have it on there before the, could discuss it and vote. So uh, I don't see the presidents of QZAC um, or Chestnut on. Is anybody on from there? Okay. Um, general public. Now, as we go forward, if you could also, so we can kind of keep this um, under control and we don't want people stepping on everybody. If you could put something in the chat that you want to speak, um, and then I'll I'll go through and recognize you so we can at least hear you and uh, give you a moment to speak. So if anybody from the public wants to speak, fire off in the chat um, and I can I can acknowledge you and recognize you. And that goes as we go forward in this meeting as well. Uh, that's the best way to do it. So do we have anybody in the general public? Yes. I don't see anything in the yep. chat. Yeah, we, yes. R yep. So I see, um, um, and excuse me, I don't, RC. So somebody named RC. Yes, hi, it's Rachel from Anatomy Manor. How are you? You are good. Thank you, Rachel. Hi, everyone. Uh, good evening. I am actually wanted to just address the Tenant Association. So Monotomy Manor has been with that one for uh, seven, maybe plus a year, eight years. Um, so three of us have taken it upon ourselves to form an uh, organization to start an election to get a tenant association running. So until then, in term, there's three of us that would like to meet with you on a monthly basis like the other tenant associations are because we really don't think we can wait that much. Like there's a lot that needs to be addressed down here and you know we don't feel like it's something that we wanna bring to these meetings. So um, I think I saw on your site that you guys meet once a month on like a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So I think there were two days that were not I can't remember the days, but there were two days and we'd like to take one of those days to meet with you or maintenance. I don't know who it is we meet with. Yeah, so before we jump into that, um, let's give you an update on, on some things that we've worked on for to help with this association. I know Fiorella and Joanne have been busy. Uh, myself and also Marion has helped out a little bit uh, on the- on For the, what? Because the Tenants Association is strictly, it has nothing to do with Arlington Housing Authority. I mean, it's its right. own entity. But you're correct. But uh, let me uh, let's give the floor to Joanne. And Joanne, can you go over uh, Jack uh, Cook, please? Cooper. Go ahead, Joanne. So my, yes. Um, first, Rachel, um, I'm really glad you started um, talking with residents because that's the beginning of uh, working towards the tenant association. I think, though, there's a little confusion. What what we decided on is that. Some of you who are organizing, we should, until there's a tenant association, that one of you, and then we were hoping a rotation of you, one of you could attend the maintenance meeting with the other presidents of the association and the head of maintenance. And I believe I should check with Jack. Those are I don't, I guess I'm, okay. So I'm sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. That's different from organizing the Tenants Association, except that the people who are beginning to organize, we thought sh we shouldn't wait for a Tenants Association until you can meet with the maintenance meeting. So 
if you want to go next time and then somebody else from your group or from at large would like to go okay. to the next joanne again. yes I, I think i just said that right i mean i i exactly what you said i definitely want to do that so there's three of us That's right now that are working on it and we will rotate if we need to or we would all come together that needs to be whatever needs to happen we just want to be at that next meeting yeah but what in order to have a tenants the beginning of a tenants association everyone has to be notified and everyone right. has to information but one thing we've worked we've decided to do is to ask jack cooper who you may know yes. who at the mass union of public housing tenants to have a zoom session and which what? leaflets so that everyone can come it's an information session on how to work towards getting a tenants association now what's different i used to be the head of a tenants association but it was just we called a meeting and we had a tenants association but it's very different in public housing uh the advantage is uh the tenants association and public housing have many more rights by law than just an ad hoc tenants association but they also have a very very um so i should say strict but regular protocol on how to form one and that's what jack cooper will address in two weeks it's going to be in the weekend of may 15th he has joanne something. i already contacted him and i'm waiting to hear back from him we've been playing tag i already contacted um mr cooper no, we have an official right i just wanted to let you know that that's on the books because i do want to do this the right way i want to make sure we can get the help we need down here and um it's overdue I, yeah. and I, I applaud you for having started this. But, but also it's Vanessa and Marianne as well. One of the regulations is before even there's a committee to plan the election is that every tenant has to be notified. He will go over all of these rules because if we don't do it the right way, the state won't accept it. So we okay. want to do it the right way. And we should have a leaflet out within the next week detailing that and um also keep reaching out um we want to include as much as possible everyone in being involved in forming the tennis association so joanne i it's very do you have a so i believe janet has an email list of everybody this is something you and i have talked about i mean i guess we'll talk um about this but um it would be nice to have that information to be able to you know maybe a layout so we know who we're you know speaking with um or, you know what that's not for this meeting i can address it in two weeks um when i when we speak with mr cooper so i'll wait so there's this tension it's like when i had a regular tenants association you don't have the landlords organizing the tenants so there's a tension about whether we can give up emails because they're all private and that's something that Jack Lucas knows all about. He goes all over the state talking okay. with tenant organizations. So I think um, I think we're on our way. And so, thank you for bringing let this me, up. But let me just add that what's been done is there's been a flyer written. Um, Fiorella has edited it as well. Joanna's edited it. Marianne's edited it. Um, I took a look at it, played with it. And, and, the flyer is an announcement that would go out to every, we would have the staff drop it at every household, every mailbox, and it would say that on May 15th at such and such, I'm, I'm not sure the exact time, but that there'd be a Zoom session put on by Jack Cooper to explain to everybody, and hopefully a lot of people will, will log on, you know, what the association, how, how the whole thing works. And he's an expert at this, obviously, and he's not, oh. he's not a board employee, so he would, we would run this Zoom information session, and then hopefully, uh, and I think you asked him, he would he would help work with you guys and guide you through the whole process, and, and hopefully end up with an election sooner than later. So um, that's that's where it is. Unbeknownst that you were doing something at the same time, it's, it, but it, but they, we can work together uh, fine, I'm sure. So, Brian, my concern is is that it's very multi multicultural down here. It, the minor, I think it's. It's very diverse and not everybody speaks English. And so you're putting flyers out for people that don't 
understand what's being said. We need interpreters. You mm. need to help well, us find somebody so we that are can interpret. Discussing that too um, for maybe a QR code on the actual flyer. So when the person scans that, they are able That's to go. Idea. Yeah. So we're definitely yes. That's definitely something we're taking into consideration. All right, yeah. but what about the scan code? Are you going to be able to write or let them know that that's what they need to do? That would be helpful too. Well, that would be the point. So then you scan the code, you're entering the flyer, and then you need it in a different uh, language, some instructions on how to do it. It's again, it's no, not I know hard. What, I know, to what, I know what you mean. It's a, it's not hard to scan a code, but some people don't. I mean, I don't think my father knows what a code. I mean, there's people out there that don't know to use their phone to hit the code. So I'm just concerned that, you know, we want everyone involved. Well, I, I mean, I think as long as everyone gets the flyer, everyone gets an email um, while we're delivering this flyer, if, you know, I don't know, if we can knock on the door, see if the person speaks English or not, it's, it's hard to um, really include everyone in that way, but we're really trying to do everything right. And well, I'd, I'd like to help with that. I'm happy to pass out flyers cool. with you. I'd like to get it going. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Can I comment? Can I, think, I, you think, I think also. Well, I was going to say, Jack Nagel at Drake Village, every time we have something going on, Jack makes sure that every flyer is done in a different language and we know where to pass them out. So everybody gets the same notice but he has it done in different languages. Right. Yeah, and I think we're certainly going to do it in this case. I mean, we're going to make sure that, uh, and I, I know Janet must know the different languages we need and so forth. So, so obviously the idea is to make sure everybody who gets the flyer who lives there understands it and can attend the Zoom meeting. And this Jack Cooper can help help uh, put this, make this in motion and, and everybody work together. And, and you know, sooner than later, we don't want this to drag on. That's why. Um, Go ahead, Joanne. I just want to say um, a great help is that it's a family. <laughs> it's for families. And usually there's someone, often a child who's in school, who can speak English, who could tell them about the scan and help them understand it. So that's another resource. At least in my experience, I talk to eight-year-olds and they translate for their, for their parents when I've been down there. So that's, that's another help. I think so doing just, to, just to sum up this discussion, um, uh, I think uh, as I'm looking at some of the comments, so yes, we are going to work on the languages, the interpretation and, and that sort of stuff. So we'll take care of that. And I think um, we should also, um, Rebecca, was it? I'm sorry. Rachel. It's Rachel. Down in sorry, Rachel. Yeah. Rachel um, and, I, and I think I see no harm in having Rachel take a look at the draft and, and see if she's got any input. I mean, it's a simple simple notice and um, and we try and make this thing happen on May 15th, assuming that, that Jack Cooper uh, can do that date. I think Joanne is trying to confirm that for the first time. That would so be great, it, thank you. And, and the second to that is we spoke earlier, yeah, I don't think it's a problem with having you attend uh, the president meetings on the maintenance and, and that sort of stuff. Um, you should get in touch with Jack Nagel about the time and place. Right. Right. So I was I was um I was privileged to meet Jack the other day, Janet. I can't come no. Excuse me, no. I'm on a meeting, hon. You got <laughs> sorry, it's one of the kids from one of my kids. Um so I, I didn't meet Jack and so it was nice to meet you. it was nice to meet you and it's good to know that. So I will I already met him is what my I got sidetracked. I can't think of what I was saying now because she was there. So right. About um, the time yeah. stuff maintenance. That's what you wanted to know. Any, uh, know the maintenance meeting is, Rachel. Yeah, no, I, I think we got that, but Jack, someone had just said that you're the person to talk to about it. I'll follow up with you tomorrow, Rachel. Wonderful, Jack. Thank you. Yep. So any other public comments? I don't see anybody in the... Um... I have one last comment to make, Mr. Connor. Go ahead, John. On the uh, website, there's a, a notice for the annual plan for fiscal year 2022. The, it suggests that the housing authority will consider the concerns of any local tenants organization. Well, the fact of the matter is the tenants organizations haven't had a chance to meet for over a year. 
how are the residents supposed to contribute to this potential information that's being sent to the Department of Housing and Community Development? And how are the tenants uh, associations supposed to uh, get together and make any reasonable uh, submissions of their concerns? Well, two ways. Uh, number one, uh, the presidents attend these meetings. Um, and number two, the presidents attend the maintenance meetings. So, I mean, if they have issues, they've certainly brought them up. Um, and residents, I mean, in, I mean, there's no doubt in Winslow Towers who, who doesn't know that Pam is the president. So I would assume that that's not have true at all, Mr. Connor. You're making a, a guess. That's a president. guess that you just made. Well, there are tests, there are a lot of people here that have no clue who the president uh, is. She makes herself available. Some of us know who she is. She does a good job with what she has, but not everybody knows. And there is not one piece of information in this building that submits that suggests that she is our president and that suggests that we have an opportunity to present our concerns to the Department of Housing and Community Development. And somebody needs to take a get a grip on this because your suggestion that uh, just because the presidents meet, that doesn't represent, they don't know what the people here are thinking. John, it's very clear that you know who the president is. So if you have a suggestion, you bring it to Pam. That doesn't answer the question. That just for right, me, Can I Mr. say something? Goddard, the tenants association is there to take responsibility of the tenants to then communicate with us so if there's an issue of people knowing who the president is or not knowing who the president is then that is the presidents and the committees and everyone's job between you know the actual building to communicate with each other to figure that out so we can only help to some extent to communicate with the presidents but at that point there has to be communication within the building Right. Pam? Can I make a comment also? Yes. Um, John, I agree with you wholeheartedly. There are a lot of people that do not know that I am the president here. But we haven't had a meeting, and we have had 17 apartment turnovers since last March. And when you can't have a meeting and send out a flyer, I will put together a flyer and ask the Housing Authority to print it out and tell it to inform who the officers are at this moment. So if they have any concerns or questions, I have a suggestion box downstairs. If they don't want to make their name known, they can put it in there and I will address it with the board or the at the president's meetings with maintenance. That's all I can do at this time until the board says we can have meetings. That's a good idea. It's a very good idea. And we should also have some means of the tenants knowing who the presidents are and how to communicate with them. I mean, the, the, I, I don't believe for a second that the presidents of the associations want 100 people knocking on their door. And Drake, Drake Billet, be a better solution. we have hours posted who the president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, we have it posted behind glass by the bulletin board, so everybody can see who's who and where to go. Well, we need it here, and I'm, I'm glad to hear that it works like that, but it's not the case. And we need, I've spoken to Mr. Nagel about this. We need to have that kind, some kind of a communications network that allows the tenants to communicate with the tenant, with the tenants association president. The president- needs to I have the, i as the president go from where the tenants want need and then i go to jack directly so basically i'm the intermediate between the residents and the building manager that's exactly so, how it's supposed to work we're supposed oh, okay. to have a better communications all the way around and the sooner that happens the, the the smoother the right. operation will work and it'll be to the benefit of everyone. So Pam, is there John, a... I will try my best to do better. I will try my best to do better for you, John. It's just a matter of us right being, now. it's a question of everybody finding out a way to communicate with our president, either from an email, I, a, I a phone, that here. and it should be posted someplace where people can see it. Yeah, maybe that would, okay. Down the door. 
So thank you. Any other public comments? Okay, I would ask at this point on that you put it put it in the chat if there's something that you want to add to the discussion as we go forward. Um, Rachel, did you raise your hand there? Yeah, I just had a couple, uh, two more things. Um, one of them is, can you guys, it doesn't have to be at the meeting or it, it would be nice to know, what's the process of getting into housing? Is there a formal process from start when you fill out your, your Section 8 um, application slash housing? to getting in here um i'm only concerned because since maybe Mar uh, november there's about at least seven maybe now only five or more um vacant vacant uh townhouses down here and i'm just question i'm just curious as to how that works yeah do you want to address that yes um i mean there yes there is a formal process to get into state aided public housing um, the way that the state has it now is there's a centralized wait list, um, and the acronym for that is CHAMP. Um, so part of the, this, this system has been in place for about three years or so, and there's been a lot of difficulties across the state in regards to the redundancies and, um, and issues of how much staff time and um, how much time it takes the, the actual applicants to get documentation in. So it has created some delays in regards to showing vacancies mm -hmm. and we are advocating with the state right now to lift some of those restrictions to create a more efficient and effective pro process. Um, but in the meantime, we, we are, you know, we're working on this and I hope by the time we meet at the next meeting, um, those vacancies will have been cut drastically in number. Okay, that's interesting because I was told by someone that from here that um, there's no way that they can't find people to come in here and, um, so that was why I was asking. I was a little, I just didn't know how the whole process. So yeah, okay. Um. Yeah, and, and just to, to, to further clarify that, um, I think maybe the, the confusion with, you know, not finding people is sometimes it's because of the way the wait list has been structured, um, there's a lot of non-response. Um, there's a high, high, high there's a high um, reliance on the priority, prioritization of applicants. Um, and what ends up happening is that there's a lot of um, return mail and a lot of non-response, which has slowed the process. And I think that if you hear comments like that, um, that would be what that's in, re in reference to. Okay. I mean, I'm trying not to beat around the bush, but we're just hearing a lot down. We live down here, so we hear a lot. We also see a lot. We see people getting in here after seven months on a wait list. We see people getting in here 10 years on a wait list. There's no rhyme or reason and there should be because people deserve to be in here if it's their turn to get in here, not preference over someone else from gender, race, anything. I mean, it should be that way. So it would be nice to, um, when we connect tomorrow, maybe we can, you could um, tell me a little bit more about that. Not a problem. Yeah. And then the last thing I wanted is, um, to just bring up and it's more monotony manner like i uh someone donated a basketball hoop net to uh for us and so i didn't go ahead and ask if it would be okay but right now we've got about the whole all these guys playing on it and i just want to make sure it's something that we can keep um and it's not hurting anybody i check with the neighbors all the neighbors are okay no music is allowed so the boys aren't and girls aren't allowed to play but we did see four stakes put in around the hoop today and i just wanted to check in and make sure the board knows and before i continue to keep it up make sure it's okay that the kids are playing so um just wanted to get your thoughts on that if that would be okay well, i mean i think this is and this is where um the benefit of a tenant association comes in yeah. because I've talked to with many of our board members, you know, if you had a vibrant tenant association and you came, you came to the board and said, listen, we'd like to put five basketball hoops up from here, 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 and here. Um, you know, I think it'd be a great thing. And then we're even talking about, you know, picnic tables and things like that to make it, you know, a, a different environment and community gardens and that sort of stuff. So I mean, We've uh, top, yeah, okay. You know, I mean, Sorry. I know these things have talked in the past, but but we're going forward from this point, and um, um, so I mean, I, I think, but I do think that, and again, if we had a tenant association, the, the proper way to do it would be have the president contact uh, now Jack and say, listen, this is what we'd like to do, and and get it, 
uh, officially blessed before you before you put it out there. I don't think it's a big deal, and I'm, I'm sure he probably wouldn't think it's a big deal. But but, but okay. maybe a great idea to put many of them instead of just one. So uh, well, yeah, that but, um, that was our. That's hopefully a goal for us i mean these this net was meant for me and my twins and someone else saw it and now every kid in the manner that plays ball plays back here because there's a place yeah. to play and so yeah. it would be nice to have more picnic yeah. tables that are are not really you know new picnic tables and some right. we'd love right. to get that going down here everybody would support right. that right right and i mean you could do ping pong tables you could do all sorts of things and um, that would be great but the, but that's i mean and really that's that's the nice thing about a tenant association is come up with these ideas and, and, um, but that's certainly a uh, welcome change. So, um, any Thank other you for letting me speak. Yep. Any other public comment? Again, if you've got anything going for just put it in the chat. I think these are more just, as I look at the chat, I don't, they're really chat amongst you and not necessarily a question I don't see yet, but, um, Excuse so. me, Mr. Connor, I had a, a Elizabeth Dre, I had a question in the chat. Yes. Thank you. Um, first, I want to congratulate uh, Nick on your election win. Congratulations. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, that, that means a lot coming from you. Yeah. You. I um, appreciate it. Absolutely. <laughs> and um, secondly, at the last meeting, uh, it was discussed that the budget would be made available to the public. And so I'm wondering if that has been done yet. And I also wanted to note, it, to note again um, that there are no minutes from 2021 on the website. So I'm wondering when I could expect those things to be posted. Thank you very much. Now I see you at 718. Sorry about that. I didn't see it. Uh, I don't think those are a big deal. I think Jack, can you work on those? Um, I can. Yep. Yeah. No problem. So, uh, you know, I, I think we can get them certainly posted before the next meeting. I don't think it's, uh, you know, and we described before we have a webmaster that that doesn't work for us so it's a matter of communicating and passing the data to him so um but i think jack will take care of that thank you um i have a i have a question please um me what is your name me my name is lisa i'm i'm down here in monotony manor and my question is regarding the pest control i know at one of the meetings maybe two three meetings ago um, that John had said that they had just signed a new, um, a new contract for pest control down here. And it, obviously it's Terminex because I've seen them. Um, they came to my apartment one time. It was a few weeks after that was signed. They came to my apartment. Um, they were wonderful. And they obviously see that I have, I have my, I call it my little visitor under one of my kitchen cabinets and they put down the traps and they said, okay, you know, we'll be back you know, we're rotating and I forget what he said the schedule was, but it was basically I'd see him like once a month. And then about a week later, somebody from Terminex came back and it was a supervisor. And she said that she was just checking to make sure that, you know, he had done what he was supposed to do. And um, she was just making sure, she said she had to check everybody to see if there was evidence or not so they could figure out, you know, who they were going back to and who they want. I was one of the people they were supposed to come back to because, again, I have a visitor and I've never seen anybody again. So I know Terminex is on the property because I've seen them, but I don't know how this works. Like I was under the impression that it was like going to be a monthly thing and then nobody has ever come back. And it's been probably two going on three months now. And I don't know if I'm supposed to be chasing like Janet to, to put me on a list for somebody to come back or if it's just like they obviously see that i have evidence that i have mice and before it gets out of control like they keep me on the rotation so how does that work with these contracts so why don't we do this why don't you um and i don't want to give out your unit number here why don't you email jack with your information um we'll we'll follow up with you tomorrow so give him your unit sure. number and he'll follow it up tomorrow. Yep. absolutely and you can find my email on the website or it's uh, just Jay Nagel at Arlington Housing. Okay. At Arlington. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's move on then to uh, project updates. Jack, do you have anything? Um... Yes. So, um, so the Winslow Towers window project is going to be starting back up tomorrow full time. Um, the issue there was um, there was a little bit of going back and forth between the contractor and the manufacturer that come to a resolution. So we're able to move forward. Um, 
once we'll be in, in touch with the contractor in regards to a schedule once we get that schedule finalized uh, we will post it for the residents and we'll make sure it's in a much larger font great cottages uh, the project is project is moving along um, they're just about done with the first three cottages um, they've already started to move on to cottage 22 and they'll be starting the next the, other, the additional two shortly um, at Chestnut Manor, uh, the parking lot was just repaved, and um, I was just told that Monotony Manor, um, there'll they'll be a landscaping contractor coming out to complete some spring cleaning, uh, which will include, include not only the grounds, but the stairwells, uh, which will be a great help down there. Um, as far as some other news, uh, we just got, we just completed the second dose of the COVID-19 vaccine for our senior low-income housing residents. Uh, around 250 senior housing residents were uh, vaccinated through this initiative. Um, you know, would like to thank again the Town of Arlington, uh, the Board of Health, the Council on Aging, the Fire Department, uh, Minuteman Senior Services, um, anybody else I'm forgetting, and, and the volunteers who showed up to assist with that initiative. Um, just a reminder that those 16 and older are eligible to receive the COVID-19 vaccine, um, and you can visit the MassDoc.gov website, or you can find that website on our website as well. Um, there are some additional rental assistance programs for any residents that are on this call. Um, you can reach out to your property manager or there is one rental assistance option on the website itself. Um, and then also in regards to the resident services coordinator position that we're trying to fill, uh, we would received over 40 applicants applications. So we're in you know, great standing to get that position filled with a very qualified candidate. And we're excited to get them in so they can hit the hit the ground running. And that's all. Great, great, thank you. Um, number uh, number five, uh, and we'll go into executive session. Um, John Griffin, the executive director, has asked for a leave of absence, uh, a three month leave of absence, uh, which the board um, uh, is going to vote on. And uh, so, do we need a, a motion for that? John Greco? Yes, uh, yes, you do. You should have a motion for that uh, consideration of request of executive director for a leave of absence. Uh, and you also have another one on there, I guess, consideration of appointment of an interim executive director. So right. that uh, you want to uh, determine whether or not that the um, uh, consideration of the appointment of the interim executive director should go first in the event that uh, you do decide to do that, then, uh, then you could do the consideration of the request for the leave after that it's up to it's up to the board which way to do it do it after Brian. go ahead so do uh nick did you make a motion there no i didn't but i think we should probably do the uh, appointment of the interim executive director first right and then go and then, then go into executive session that's fine. sure is that, is that right john Greco? yeah that's what i do and if you do go into executive session there's several things you want to keep in mind when you go into executive session Number one, um, you should you any, any when you go into executive session, you need roll call vote to do that. Every vote made in executive session should have a roll call vote with it. If the executive session is as uh, listed on uh, that uh, agenda uh, for executive director leave of absence, uh, there may be an issue where that has to be executive session because if it's discussing anything uh, that is in the way of personal. Uh, whether it's illness of any kind or anything like that, that should be an executive session. So you want to make sure that that uh, only uh, persons who are involved actually making that decision are on that executive session, and every vote should be uh, in that should be in roll call. Additionally, you should announce before you go into executive session when you do that, if and when you do that, that um, whether or not you will come into reg go back into reconvene into regular session or you will adjourn the regular session right from the executive session without reconvening the regular session. In other words, you'll adjourn right from the executive session rather than going back into regular right. session. So the people who don't who want to be heard don't wait around and then find out that you're going to adjourn right from the executive session. You've got to announce that. All uh, right. Good, good point. So a lot, that, a lot of rules, I realize. Yeah, that's all right. So with that said, why don't we take the other two, eight, uh, item number eight and nine, uh, get that out of the way, and then we can uh, vote on the interim director and then go into executive session. Then we can adjourn right from executive session so we don't have to come back and people don't have to hang on. So, uh, number nine, do we have approval of the minutes? I move we approve the minutes of March 23rd, 2021. 
Second. I'll second that. Thank you, Fiorella. Uh, so all in favor, Nick? Yep. Yes. Uh, uh, Fiorella? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Gar? Yes. And myself as a yes. Uh, and then we have number eight. Are there any other matters that may be appropriate to come before the authority? Do the members have anything else? Brian? Yes, Pam. Brian, I, can I make a comment? I, I would just like to say that now that you're chairman um, of the board, and I know that you're in school as a professional student, <laughs> that maybe uh, maybe the board should consider, because I know Wednesdays are going to be hard for you to change the meeting night. I think that might be something that the board might consider. Yeah, actually, uh, good news. So uh, my schedule for um, second year changes to Tuesday and Thursday night, so Wednesdays are now free again. So we can oh. go back to our normal Wednesday scheduled meetings from this point on, um, barring a term, I think. So, uh, and thank you everybody for your patience. Uh, I'm the oldest, uh, first year law student in the country here, it seems. But I have one last thing just to bring up, and then and that would be that would be it. Um, someone brought up the COVID vaccines. Nobody down here had been, has been notified that they qualify, and I know it's a little bit after now, but. I brought it up to Nick and he had thanked me and then I didn't really hear anything after that. I thought it would be addressed. Um, I didn't even know until after that housing uh, residents were able to be vaccinated. And I just talked to someone the other day who, and it just came light to them. I mean, it does such a disservice for people. I mean, Jen, all, all you have to do is send out a mass email that, that gets sent out to all of us when food is here saying, hey, here's the link to get, I mean, it's, it's a matter of life and death. So I think it's imperative that you put give this information to people down here. They deserve it. I, um, I, I, go ahead, Jack, you wanna to add to that? Yeah, so I mean, the the, the guidance that was provided by the state um, in regards to the COVID-19 vaccine, COVID vaccine was um, for the specific item item line for, um, for vaccines for housing authorities was only for residents of senior low-income housing. Um, and that is why the clinics were only done at, you know, USAC chest oh. and drink. Winslow. Um, so I, I think that there has been some confusion about that, but we yeah, no, to... I'm not talking about the clinics. I'm yeah. talking just tell people they don't even know they qualify. All you have to do is just email all of us and be like, hey, you qualify because people thought they were going in phases. We didn't we didn't know low income and, and elderly were part of that phase. We just assumed we were coming after. So like I said, I talked to someone the other day and they didn't they said we're we qualify. We don't, so that's what that's what I was um, so low, low income on its own was not an eligibility factor, according to the guidance we received from the state in our webinars. It was um, it had to be senior low income housing. So that's so that's why I was identifying those different properties. So that's why we weren't able to, um, you know, send out those letters to to, to the residents of Monument Manor or Section Eight voucher holders. But I got yeah. vaccinated. And so did almost everyone else down here. We're not elderly. We got it when because we have we're low income. All I'm saying is that if you're sitting on information like that, and there is now the option, just get it out there. Let people know. I mean, it, like I said, it's it, yeah, it's just think, the it's the right thing to do. But I, I think the answer there there was no information. The only information is what the governor is telling you, and the state is telling you. You know, and 16 year olds are eligible, and so forth. We don't we didn't have any any information to give out. That's, you do now and people are still not sure that they are eligible i think they you know honestly they've got to watch the news and see what the governor and the government when they when they're eligible i mean we, we don't so have if they don't speak english and they go and watch news that they can't understand because they just moved here from a different country you expect i mean it's just it's just common courtesy i mean it's like there's death. news in every language people are getting text messages okay that they're eligible to okay vaccine. i'm yep, just saying that. that people do have to get educated on their own if they care about the concept it's a mass issue it's not just sure. us or so, some states yeah it's everyone and if people are genuinely worried about it then it is our responsibility and our own to really look into it. I disagree. I do. And we talked before about this, and, and you had a different no, take I, on I, it. No, so. uh, well, well, I know. Well, Joanne, Yes. <laughs> I Go just ahead. want to say that it's my understanding 
with the vaccine, they ask you if you have health insurance and you check it off. If you don't have insurance, paid for. And what we need to do, do in Menard Manor, tell people that information, if you have to check it, I'm almost positive paid for um, by the state or the federal government if you don't have insurance because they want everyone to be vaccinated. So the question is to tell people if they're younger, I believe then between 16 and 60, they are now eligible to right. get this vaccine and put on the email, the state website where they can find out where to get it. Also, obviously Walgreens <clears throat> is the nearest place to Anonymy Manor that gives out these um, gives out vaccines. So that's another suggestion. But I think it's I think Rachel's right that people just are unaware that they can now get the vaccine and we want them to get the vaccine. Yeah, I just want people to be okay down here. I'm not trying to cause any controversy. I just want people to be safe. I mean, my kids hang out around here. You know, it's it's just it's so, he, he, it's the right thing to do. So a suggestion maybe Jack is to have put on the the email, an email blast one saying that now people these ages are eligible and give the website where they can look for where to find a place to get it. And also, I mean, I'm saying this now because I got mine a while ago, but I understand that, it, that there's no fee if you don't have any insurance because right. they want right. everyone to be vaccinated, but that would be worth checking. Yep, exactly. Okay, um, let's go back to number um, uh, number six. Uh, appointment of the interim executive director, Jack Nagel. I, I move, I make a motion to appoint Jack Nagel as the interim executive director. Second. Second guy. Um, let's have a roll call vote, Nick. Can I, um, Mr. Chairman? May I suggest that um, you make part of that uh, so, so it's clear what the terms are? Uh, I would say um, subject to and conditional because we don't know what the next vote is going to be relative to the uh, request uh, for the leave of absence. I would suggest that uh, some kind of language subject to and conditional on the granting, if any, of a leave of absence to the current executive director in uh, commencing on and maybe continuing during uh, any leave of absence which may um, uh, may uh, be requested by or granted by or subsequently approved by the board. So it's conditional upon that, that that's so made. So, so moved. So, yes, you get all that. Hopefully you got all that. Um, so the, the motion's been amended. Um, so, you, I, yeah, I, 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 will, I, I will second that. Okay. So all in favor, uh, Joanne? Yes. Uh, Nick? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Agar? Yes. And myself. So that's unanimous. Um, Jack. I ask okay. a question. Okay, I have one more question, Mr. Connor. Um, we have uh, just elected Mr. Nagel, who is a fine selection. But what happens to the, uh, the job that he has now as operations manager? And my my and adding on to that, does that mean we're going to be paying two executive directors at the same time? How does that work? Well, the board's going to go into executive session and discuss those things, John. So at some point in time, we'll make it public, but uh, not at this moment in time. So. May I ask a question? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, um, could I don't know who Jack Nagel is. Could somebody, Jack? I mean, I, I'm sure. Uh, Jack Nagel has worked here for a while at the housing. Um, Jack, do you want to give a little bio? Sure. Um, so, I, yeah, I've, I've worked with the housing authority for um, for a few years now. Uh, prior to that, I was um, I worked with the Department of Transitional Assistance. I was a cash and snap worker. I also worked in a centralized um, a specialist unit where we worked on special initiatives to help people um, going through disasters like our. Program efficacies, efficiencies. Um, I've also got my master's of, I have a master of public administration from the University of Massachusetts, Boston. Um, prior to that, I served in the Army. 
Um, I served about five years in the US Army um, as a military intelligence professional. Uh, and yeah. And how long have you been with the Housing Authority, Jack? Been with the Housing Authority about two and a half years. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so do we have a motion to go into executive session? I make a motion to move into executive session. I second it. Uh, John, do we have to? Um, we have to say we're going to adjourn from there too. Uh, adjourn I, after. I would make it clear to state first of all, make sure it's a you, you do a roll call vote to go into executive session, and then make it clear that uh, whether or not you're going to um, reconvene a regular session, or you're going to adjourn the total session, regular session, right from the executive session. Nick. So I make I make a motion to move into executive session do we vote now john for that and then we make another motion no uh no you could do and make it say you move the motion would be to go into executive session and not to reconvene the regular session but to adjourn the regular session at the same when you adjourn the executive session you will not reconvene in the regular session the regular session will be adjourned at that time also that would be part of the motion so moved so moved and guy did you second that i, I did not i think someone else did I did. Joanne. Oh, Joanne, thank you. Thank you. Uh, all in favor, Guy? Yes. Nick? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. And Joanne? Yes. And Brian is yes. So can I ask that all of us on the screen except uh, the board and, and our attorney and Jack um, 